In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the user interface of Topaz Photo AI so you can get a better idea of how to get the most out of it with your photos. I'll start with the file bar on top, followed by the bar on the bottom, and then all of the tools along the right side of the user interface. Going up to the file menu, you have your typical file and view options. Under autopilot, you have an option that reads allow auto upscaling. Enabling this will tell Topaz Photo AI to upscale your photo if it determines that the resolution's too low and that increasing it would improve the image quality. It's a great feature and I highly recommend keeping it on. Under account, you'll wanna make sure that you are logged in so that you don't have any of the trial limitations applied. However, if you do exceed your maximum seat allowance and you wanna log out of one of the computers so that you can log into another computer, this is where you would do so. Under processor, auto is the default setting and it's what I recommend. However, if you are noticing performance issues, you can try selecting the CPU or your GPU options. If you still run into issues, I recommend contacting customer support, which brings me to the help menu. Here you can provide feedback to us as well as contact support and then open the log folder on your computer. And that's gonna be helpful for some support issues that the support agent might ask you for your log file and that's where you will go to get it. The bulk of your user interface will be taken up by the preview window. This is where your image will be shown. And then on the bottom left is a little ellipse which will allow you to close your image show the image in your finder or open another image because you can have multiple images open in Topaz Photo AI for a batch editing workflow. Next to that is the preview status bar. Here it'll show you as Autopilot is analyzing your photo and what it's doing. Also, if you click in the preview area, you will see your original photo and that'll be represented in that status bar. Along the bottom right of the preview area, you will see an eye icon. Clicking on this will toggle between the original and the processed version. Next to that are three view modes. The first and currently selected is the full screen view, and this will show you your entire image processed at once. Next to that is a split screen view. To the left of the bar in the middle, you will see your original photo, and to the right will be the processed version. You can also click on this bar, and if you drag to the right, you will see more of the original photo, and if you drag to the left, you will see more of the processed photo. And finally, there is a side-by-side -side view. This will show you your original photo next to the processed photo. And for the purposes of this video, we'll stick with the full screen view. To the right of the view modes is your zoom menu. Here you can select to view your entire image so that it fits to screen, followed by a series of zoom factor presets. If you select on one, it'll automatically zoom into that factor. And then if you wanna see your entire image again, just click on fit. On the top right of the user interface is the navigator. This will always show you a snapshot of the entire photo. If you are zoomed into your photo, you'll also see a focus box. You can pan around your image several ways. One way is to click in your image and then drag around with your mouse or trackpad. Another way is to click in the focus box and drag around. And then the third way is if you click anywhere in the image, that focus box will snap to that position. Now we'll go ahead and zoom into 200% to get a closer view of some of the people in this photo and we can discuss the rest of the tools in Topaz Photo AI. Below the navigator is the autopilot. Now autopilot is arguably the most important feature in Topaz Photo AI. It is easily the hallmark feature of this application because autopilot will show you everything important that it has detected about your photo, including the subject, if there are a certain number of faces that are low quality or high quality, as well as any issues that could be impacting image quality. When Autopilot detects a subject, if you hover over the word subject, you will see a mask automatically apply. I'm going to go ahead here and zoom to fit so you can see the entirety of the mask that was applied. And this was done automatically by Autopilot. I did not do anything to create this mask, but we do have the ability to refine it, and I'm going to cover that in a minute. Before I do that, I want to go on to the next section in Autopilot. Here you will see line items indicating issues with the image quality of your photo. So you can see that in this particular situation, Autopilot detected and removed high luminance noise. It also detected 27 unique faces that it considers low quality, and it automatically applied the Recover Faces filter to improve that. And like subject, if you hover over the word faces, you will see boxes highlighting each of the faces that have been detected. And both the subject mask view and the face detection will be shown at any zoom level. Below that, you'll see a button called Using Autopilot Settings, and there's a green dot next to it. The green dot will indicate any of the settings that Autopilot automatically prescribes and applies. 
So in this case here, you can see that autopilot recommended removing noise. Not only does it recommend removing noise, but if you click on the filter, you will see the specific AI model that it selects and the strength that it recommends. And the same thing goes with recover faces. Now you can choose to take autopilot settings or you can modify them by changing any of the strength or model variables. When you do that, you'll see now that the dot becomes hollow and the button changes to reset to autopilot settings. If you click this, it will automatically revert back to the autopilot settings that it prescribed. Another thing that you can do is add filters that autopilot did not enable. So for example, if you want to apply a sharpening, you can do that by toggling the sharpen switch. And here's where the refine button that I mentioned next to the subject detected line comes into play. There's an option under sharpen to apply sharpening only to the detected subject. You can see that by hovering here as well, and you'll see that same mask. But what if there are areas of the mask that autopilot did not detect? For example, you can see on this girl's shirt, there's a section of the mask that was not detected. In that case, you can refine your mask. And the way that I recommend doing that is to first change to fit view so that you can see the entire image and then click on the refine button. Here you'll be able to select one of three different presets. I find that default works best for the majority of the images. Portrait is great if you are working on a photo where there is clearly one or two people in the photo. And the landscape is ideal if you're working on a landscape photo. So we're gonna stick with default here. And what I wanna do is increase the sensitivity of the mask so that it includes more of the image. So what I'll do is take the sensitivity slider and start dragging it to the right. And you can see how more of that mask is being drawn in until I see that everything in the area that I care about is now masked in. The next slider is softness and this will control how hard the edge of the mask is. So what I'll do now to illustrate this is zoom in tighter and position it along the edge of the mask here. If I take the softness and I bring it to zero, you'll see that the edge of the mask is now really hard. I prefer a soft mask so that there is a nice feathered transition from the area that will be sharpened to the areas that won't be sharpened. And now that I have refined the mask selection, I can click on the done button to commit that. And now I can feel confident in knowing that any sharpening that's being applied is only being applied to the subject because this switch is enabled. Before we move on to upscale, let's take a closer look at each of the filters under image quality. First is remove noise. And here you'll have two different noise reduction models, normal and strong. This filter is ideal for removing color and luminance noise that could be distracting for your image. And then below that is a strength slider, which will control just how much noise reduction should be applied. Next, we have Sharpen with its two models that are ideal for recovering out of focus or soft images. The first model is ideal for lens blur, and the second is ideal for motion blur. And like the remove noise filter, you have a strength slider to control just how much of that sharpening should be applied. You also have the subject only toggle, which will apply sharpening only to the masked subject. Below that is the recover faces filter. And here there is a strength slider. Recover faces will automatically be enabled when autopilot detects at least one face that's low quality in your photo. And you can see here, if I click to show the original photo, how the faces are just a little soft and lacking detail. But when we let go, all of that detail snaps into place. And finally, we have enhanced resolution. Enhanced resolution is most closely tied to upscale. Because we're not upscaling, enhanced resolution is disabled. You can enable it if you want. However, if you do choose to upscale, enhanced resolution must be enabled. And if you expand on enhanced resolution, you will see the three different AI models that you can choose from. Under upscale, you'll have four options. The first 1x is the default standard resolution of your image. 2x will double the resolution, 4x will quadruple the resolution, and max will upscale the image to the maximum resolution supported by Topaz Photo AI. And if we double our resolution, you will see the pixel count for the width and height update automatically, as well as the original resolution, the upscaled resolution, and the estimated file size of the output file. Now that we are ready to save our file, the only thing left to do is click on the Save Image button. If you were working in a batch with multiple photos, you would see all of those photos queued up along the left side of the Save dialog screen. Under Export Settings on the right, you have a few different options. The first is the ability to apply a prefix, which will apply any text to the beginning of your photo. So here, if you want, you can 
type in the word my photo and you will now see that my photo applies to the beginning of the file name. If you don't want anything, just remove that. The suffix is the same thing. It will apply in this case here, dash photo AI to the end of your file name. And then there is a toggle here to add applied filters to the file name. It's just a handy option so that you can see at a quick glance which filters you applied to the output file. Next is the save to option. You have a few options here. The first is to save your file to the original folder where the source file it was located, or you can click on browse to open a file explorer and navigate to any folder that you want. And below that is the format for the output file. By default, we will have preserve input format selected. So in this case, we opened a JPEG, so we would save a JPEG, but you can choose to save as a PNG, a TIFF, or a DNG. Another important point to make is that if you open up a raw file, the preserve image format option will save a DNG file by default. And when you're done, just click on save. Now that the file is saved, you'll see a bit of extra information. You will see the source file file size as well as the output file file size. You can also navigate directly to that output file by clicking on this icon here. And when you're done, you can click on close window. And with Topaz Photo AI handling the heavy lifting of improving image quality, you are now free to start focusing on the creative editing with your post-processing workflow. Thanks a lot.